Hey guys, and welcome to episode 9 of our chat system. In this episode, we need to do some uh, preparation work for the private message chat system. And um, I also forgot to implement a guild chat command in our last episode, so I'll be doing that this time around. And there was a, uh, a bug brought up to my attention um, with the chat box the daytime was always invalid it wasn't accurate so we'll be fixing that and I'll explain that in more detail um, so first thing go to your epic games launcher go to the marketplace and look up this le extended library and install it to your engine what this library does is it exposes additional Unreal Engine 4 C++ functions in blueprints and we will be using some stuff from here uh, especially for our private message system and then we'll be using this library to fix our chat box date times so once you have that installed uh, what we're going to do is this s channel message let's go ahead go ahead and rename that to s chat message and the reason being I want to reuse this structure for the um, between the um, chat box that's at the lower left hand side and the private messaging system and let's go ahead and open that up and what we need to do as you can see we in our last episode we already took out the map region and the channel from here which is good because it makes it more usable um, for example the the private message system doesn't care about the region and the guild and the channel and all that um, so for this message time, let's change this to a type of string. And let me also mention why the date time wasn't working. There is a bug opened up in, in, in the uh, Unreal Engine bug tracking platform where the date time objects, the date time structures, do not replicate across the network correctly and it doesn't matter if it's going through a replicated variable it doesn't matter if it's going across the network as a parameter to an event and it doesn't matter if it's going from the authority to a client or from the client to an authority what happens all the time when you send a date time structure across the network until Unreal Engine fixes this is the value gets reset for whatever reason and there's different ways you can get around this and the way I'm going to be taking will be to store the date time as a string instead of an opt instead of a structure until hopefully soon epic will fix that but I think that bug has been around for a year or two now so it's definitely on their lower priority list so after you install the plugin and you rename the S channel message to S chat message. Let's go ahead and fix the chat box messages. So what we need to do is open up the WB chat box, go to the graph, and now you can see that node is broken. We're still going to use UTC now, except what we're going to do is call to string ISO eight six zero one, and this function is provided through the low entry extended standard library that you just installed so if you're not seeing this make sure you installed the plugin if you did install the plugin you might have to restart your Unreal Engine editor and let's connect that up we can move that in like that and we have uh, compile and save. We have one additional thing to change in the WB chat box message. Go ahead and go to the graph and drag this message time string. And what we need to do, um, not prepared, I'm sorry, let me go to my notes. What we need to do is drag off of this and call date time from ISO string. And looks like this is actually provided. Um, by default it's not exposed as the blueprint plugin we just installed and that should fix that uh, we're not using the daytime in the um, game stage so we should be able to just run this and oh. so 
there's a compile error and I have a feeling it's going to make me restart my project nope okay cool okay so now if I send this message as we can see January 26th 2017 and I believe that's today yep 26th and it is in UTC format uh, which is universal coordinated time 632 but it's still showing up in P, uh, PST Pacific Standard Time and that should be because we are converting to the local time zone from UTC to the local time zone so alright so that's fixed the next thing we need to do well, the next thing I'm going to do because it's been bothering me each and every episode if I go to my player controller and I open up my event graph I have implemented this where if I press tab it'll show the mouse cursor or hide it um, and I can sh show you what I mean so I clicked in here the mouse is gone if I click tab the mouse um, it, uh, it shows and then I can navigate around but when I tab and it shows the mouse you know, it's still bound to my character's axi uh, his axis movement until I left click and then it stops. So I'm going to fix that. So you can do that by opening up your third person character and when you, and go up here. And this is just the default one that came with this starter project. I haven't changed anything in here yet. So what I'm going to do is I'll just use a simple branch and uh, I need to actually add a begin play event and then get owning player, get owner, get player controller, there we go. And I'll cast to my BP player controller and I will promote to a variable and call it BP player controller. I'll make that private and connect that up so okay so what I need to do is I need to grab my player controller and I need to get show mouse cursor and I need to actually invert that not boolean so if we're not showing the mouse cursor, then we can uh, rotate the camera, just like that. Let's uh, duplicate that branch down here. Connect that up. Now we have one other one. This is for the gamepad. We need mouse input right here. So I'm actually going to move this down here and move this over here. And let's go ahead and copy these nodes. And connect them up. Okay, I'll clean this up later. And now that should do it. So if I click in here to focus the game and I tab out, we're no longer rotating. If I left click, we're no longer rotating. And that is what we want. Um, the other thing, let me show you the other bug because I missed this. If I send a text message, watch this. I can edit it. We definitely don't want that. Um, so what I need to do to fix that, let me go open up your chat box message, go to the message node, and actually, uh, we do not want to uncheck is enabled. I was having issues where if I was to do that, then um, it would always be kind of like grayed out text and I couldn't change the color. So what we need to do is we need to come up to the function list and the event graph and override and on preview key down 
And what this does, if we hover over it, is it uh, calls this before when a key is pressed, when the widget has focus. And it gives you the ability to intercept the event before that event triggers on each of, for example, these nodes that are in the uh, that are in the widget. So what we need to do is we need to say, okay, when the user presses a key on our chat box message line, we need to grab our message node, get it, and check has keyboard focus. And if it does, what we need to do is just return and the return value type in handled and event reply handled that just tells tells the 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 event um, I don't know what it is the event system that hey we handled this keyboard uh, key down event don't tell any of the child the child widgets about it and Otherwise, we need to call unhandled, which says the opposite. Hey, we didn't handle this. Let whatever component they clicked on, whether it's a text box or a button, let it handle the event. <clears throat> so now if I run play, oh, I missed something. Uh, what I need to do is I need to call drag off handled and call clear user focus and then drag the return value of that. There. Okay. There we go. Compile and save. And now it should work. So now I cannot edit it. It just clears my focus. Okay. It's, we're done with that. Uh, another thing I forgot to do in our last episode is the guild channel command. So let's open up <clears throat> the parse message function. And we'll cop or actually we won't copy this, but we'll bring this down. And then we'll copy the global command. And if false, drag it there. If this is false, drag it there. And what we need to do is just type in slash guild. And channel should be guild. Compile and save and play. So now let me figure out which one of these guys share guild. Okay, so they share. And oh, he has the same guild too. But, anyways, that shouldn't matter. <clears throat> so if I type in slash guild, my guild chat. It sends, and if I go to let's say global, make sure these are still working. Okay. So if I come down here, and I'm in the global channel. If I type in guild, my guild chat message, send it. We received it. Cool. <clears throat> uh, next up. Actually, I believe that's it for now. Um, so, like I said, this was a pretty quick episode, 13 minutes. Um, I will be releasing an episode tomorrow or the day after. Um, and we will actually start on the private message system. I've been experimenting with that. I already have um, a widget window for the private message conversation. And I actually have it set up so you can drag it around the window. So in our next episode, in episode 10, we'll actually be implementing a reusable widget that looks like a window that can be dragged around, just like when you're on your windows and you have this close button here and you can drag it around like that. <clears throat> so we'll, I'll be implementing something like that. Uh, and so, yeah, please subscribe, like, share, comment if you have any issues or any feedback or if there's anything else you want me to to uh, do and uh, yeah so tune in and uh, expect another video in a, about a day or two